on WRFP. And I will unmute my microphone and take charge of the meeting here in Eric's place. I'm Gregory Granlund, Vice Chairperson of this commission. Uh, and I will call this meeting to order. Uh, the first item typically is the uh, statement regarding our various technologies. This meeting is being broadcast live by Valley Media Works on Charter Channel 994, WRFP-LP 101.9 FM, and online at valleymediaworks.org. The Plan Commission attempts to conduct its public hearings in a relatively informal manner, but within the constraint that we must deal with the issues before us in an orderly and business-like fashion. We have the staff of the city uh, initiate the discussion and present each project, after which we give the, application, the applicant an opportunity to speak, and then others from the public, either for or against the proposal, are each typically permitted to speak once. We do request that everyone restrict their comments to only the issues before us, avoid any unnecessary repetition, and be prudent in their use of time. We want to be sure that we have adequate time to review and discuss all the items with equal diligence. Uh, anyone here who has their cell phone still turned on and not silent uh, is please asked to change that. Uh, if they plan to speak this evening, uh, there is no member of the public present, so you won't need a piece of paper to hand in. We will keep track of anyone who is on the list of uh, remote attendees, their names are all posted currently. Anyone who shows up anonymously, we will ask for their identification. Um, when you speak, please introduce yourself in any case so the others who are in our remote audience can understand who it is who's addressing the commission. Um, and if there are controversies regarding an item, we may engage some specific time limits to help move things along. Uh, the roll call here in the room. I will call on those present. Commissioner Seymour. Here. Commissioner Christofferson. Here. Those of you on our network, I will first unmute Mary Proznik. Commissioner, are you? Here. Thank you. And then uh, Commissioner Brenholt. Here. Uh, Commissioner Gregert. Here. Commissioner Wolfgram. Here. Commissioner Obeyed. Here. We apparently do have a quorum, both somehow present and mysteriously distant. Um, I ask if there's a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting on September 14th. Commissioner Christofferson. I move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Commissioner Seymour? Second. Uh, shall we call a vote on that again? And again, I will start with Commissioner Prosnick, who is remote. See if this thing will actually let me unmute there. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Brenholt? Aye. Commissioner Gregert? Aye. Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Chris Aye. And <laughs> Commissioner Seymour. Aye. Thank you. Now we have uh, the item number four on our agenda is an open comment period for members of the public. Uh, who may want to address items that do not appear on our agenda and give comment. Um, is there anyone who is logged in who wishes to make such comment? Those of you who have logged in from a computer can put up a hand raise sign and we will answer that. Or you can put your comments into the chat and I will look for 
those of you who wish to make an address by either the chat box or the hand raising. I'm going to unmute Adam Wehrling because there's a marker on here. Adam, do you have an additional item or are you speaking to one of our main items? Didn't it work? Yeah, proposal. Okay, you are, I, I didn't have you unmuted fast enough. Excuse me? I'll be talking about our CTC parking proposal later. Okay. And then uh, Brian Lambert, just in case there was an item that you wish to bring forward, you have a marker on the list here. Uh, I, I also here with the CBTC parking lot project. Okay, thank you very much. So we don't have any additional item, any additional listeners who are logging in to speak. So we will move on to Item number five, which is a public hearing for recommendation to the City Council, public zoning, Chippewa Valley Technical College parking lot expansion, and this is to recommend approval of the parking lot expansion for phase one of the new transportation center. Applicant is Chippewa Valley Technical College and Ayers Associates, and the location is 4000 Campus Drive. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chair and members of the commission. Again, before this evening is uh, this request to approve a parking lot expansion for Chippewa Valley Technical College, or CVTC, at, uh, in conjunction with their proposed Transportation Education Center. You may see that also referenced as Transportation Center. Uh, I believe the official and more formal uh, terminology is Transportation Education Center. Uh, the item again, it's is agenda item number five on your map above. It is uh, the northwest portion of the city at their uh, west campus. With that, uh, here's the drawing showing the notification map. Again, this is a public zoning, a P public zoning designation. And so uh, site plans, uh, including the one before you here, uh, do need to go through that public zoning review process, therefore goes to plan commission as well as the city council with your recommendation. And it is a, again, a public hearing. So we do go through the standard public hearing notification process. This shows those who are directly mailed with uh, public hearing notice. I should note uh, staff has not received any uh, direct comment from those uh, noticed here uh, prior to tonight. Here's a aerial photo. Again, these are from 2018. Again, showing the uh, overall property in question. And we'll show a little bit more specifically to the site plan here momentarily. This is showing, uh, again, from uh, Ayers Associates as the engineer uh, in conjunction with uh, CBTC as the applicant property owner. Uh, the parameters of the overall Transportation Education Center project at the bottom right of the drawing, you can see the parking lot that is uh, the portion that's really before you here this evening. Uh, if the Planning Commission and the City Council desire to approve this site plan, again, this is a vacant area for this parking lot currently, uh, staff would recommend a few conditions, and those are identified in the staff report in terms of, again, referencing to the future site plan review of the proposed Transportation Education Center. That would be required as well, beyond just, again, the parking lot portion here tonight. Uh, Staff would also recommend the condition of uh, providing pedestrian connection from the parking lot to the proposed Transportation Education Center and the existing Energy Education Center. Again, you can see the, the parking lot itself is, is fairly segmented in terms of being uh, uh, a bit detached um, overall from the uh, remaining portion of the project and site. As well as, again, uh, standard condition that we always have with site plans is that uh, the engineering department would need to approve drainage calculations and the drainage plan that's required. Again, to get into more specifics related to the project, again, bottom right shows the area really in question uh, for your consideration here tonight. 
so zoomed in uh, view of that. Uh, the dashed area again is the new construction as it relates to existing construction or existing uh, uh, parking and building improvements. Uh, the phase one for the new 115,000 square foot transportation education center uh, for the West Campus. Again, is that overall drawing here with buildings primarily to the north and west of the proposed parking lot. Uh, this site plan proposes 176 parking stalls located south of the existing parking lot. Uh, the narrative proposed by uh, the applicant and their engineer uh, do indicate uh, that they would require, based on code, uh, 294 stalls. Uh, the site currently contains 302. And then again, with the proposed stalls, would be 596 all told. Uh, preliminary site plan, again, shows that proposed new facility, which would be reviewed at a later date. But again, both by Plan Commission and City Council. Uh, the applicant has noted various reasons for the new parking lot. And one of those would be overflow parking, uh, staging during project construction for the overall uh, transportation education center. Again, I'll show the overall drawing and map. And again, uh, identifying that to the bottom right there would be, again, used not only as parking lot currently, but also for staging as the rest of the project to the west and north builds out. The uh, other reasons would be budgetary considerations, and again, um, just expansion of parking for the overall uh, campus. Uh, staff uh, <clears throat> would it want to specifically identify uh, some concerns about the location from the proposed transportation education center. You can see there just the, uh, the distance uh, from the proposed parking lot expansion to those buildings to the north and west. Uh, approximately 600 feet and distance from the energy education or energy center uh, which is again to the directly to the north of proposed parking uh, would be approximately 400 feet so again the the access uh, for this parking area to the actual buildings that be utilized is is quite quite a long distance uh, parking requirements are based on number of employees staff facility needs and that's been noted in the uh, applicant's narrative and packet. Uh, it's a it's a bit uh, difficult to determine the exact number of students and staff at uh, on campus at any one time. I just want to call that out. So again, uh, kind of maximum and minimum requirements. It can obviously fluctuate depending on the season and the day. Uh, staff did do some in, uh, kind of site inspections and noted that the existing parking, again, there primarily to the north of this proposed area. Uh, was quite underutilized, um, even viewed that myself uh, this afternoon. Um, certainly, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, cars, vehicles in the area, but um, uh, generally um, a small number compared to what's already existing. Uh, with that, um, again, uh, the long-term need for this parking and the uh, underutilization of existing parking is some issues that certainly uh, raise some questions for staff. And again, as you, you're aware, certainly um, the main campus off Claremont, there's the large parking area, parking lot that is uh, certainly very much underutilized and uh, certainly caused uh, concern when you see expansions of parking lots elsewhere uh, uh, with the, within the CBTC. Uh, community, so that's something we don't want to see um, continued uh, elsewhere beyond that campus already. Uh, beyond that, again, it, this is just really the parking lot component as part of this first phase. Uh, applicant does note they will be compliance with the lighting standards. Uh, again, there is the lack of some pedestrian connections, at least uh, very noticeably identified here. You can see some. Uh, perhaps identified to the to the left, to the west there, kind of a narrow pathway to the north. But again, that's uh, simply just one pathway for the entire um, proposed parking expansion. And again, uh, engineering staff and WCD engineer Lee Ness is present as well to answer questions uh, as they come up regarding uh, stormwater. You do see their uh, stormwater uh, pond or feature 
uh, that would be in between the existing parking and the proposed parking. And uh, again, they have provided some basic uh, requirements from uh, engineering department for, again, that uh, engineering plan that is required uh, before they can move forward with the construction. So with that, I did want to show just the overall, there's additional images in your packet of the overall uh, expansion project and transportation education center. They just want to show a little bit more kind of the overall image here just for, uh, you know, kind of parking on this, no pun intended, as we have the discussion for this item. So with that, um, certainly can stand for any questions. So the first round goes to uh, panel members, commissioner members who may have questions of staff. Um, either of you have a question? Do we have anyone? Uh, if you'd un unmute yourself, uh, commission members, if you'd like to speak, I will call on you when I see the little uh, lights flicker here on the dashboard. If you don't have, let's see, uh, Susan, Commissioner Wolfgram, we'll call on you first. Thank you. Um, Mr. Allen, forgive me if I missed this in the narrative, um, but what is the rationale for expanding the parking lot if the existing is already underutilized? Thank you. Sure, uh, thank you, Commissioner Wolfgram. Um, that is, uh, again, a good question. Uh, the applicant has provided some comments to that and I'm sure would be uh, eager to share some additional uh, conversation here this evening. Uh, again, part of the intent would be to uh, address any kind of overflow parking and uh, specifically related to staging during project construction. So at the very least, it would provide some additional hard surface area for uh, future construction as that gets underway over the next uh, uh, year to year and a half. Uh, I believe the goal is to look at a 2022 opening for what you see on the screen here. So uh, certainly there would be other, uh, there's certainly other potential options for that kind of staging approach, but uh, that is one of the reasons given. Uh, I would defer to them to respond to any kind of budget questions, again, with, related, with relation to uh, their recent um, referendum earlier this year and how that relates to uh, this part of the project. And again, I should note too, again, this is uh, you know, one part, one phase of the overall project, uh, but again, it is just the parking lot uh, component here before you this evening. Thank you. Are there additional questions from commission members on this? Yes, Jeremy, uh, Commissioner Gregert. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. The, I guess my question is, is, you know, I do think this, the overall site plan, although that's not in front of us yet, like we are at least do see an indication of what the plan is on page nine, the project site layout, at least being preliminary. I'm trying to figure out how to interpret some parts of it. And I guess, some, you know, there's Campus Road that's up to the east and the north, and that's my understanding of City Street, but um, the road that's more internal to the campus is, is the one that goes to the west of the Education Center, the Energy Education Center. Would that, would that road that, that would be more internal to the campus still go through? I guess it'd be one of my questions. And then is there a possibility to maybe just build a larger lot north of the Transportation Education Center because we see that there's, there appears to be additional land on the north uh, that is being utilized for, for parking under the proposal. And then I guess a third related you know, piece of that is, you know, if there isn't enough parking on the north and the, the parking on the south is not considered close enough for most students, would they then end up parking along ca campus 
road as an alternative and, and then the city would potentially have to ban parking there and I'm just trying to look at all the different moving pieces here. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Very good questions. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Gregor. I would, again, def defer some of those to uh, the applicant to respond to. Uh, tried to show some of those areas as you were just making your comments here. Uh, we'll jump ahead here. Um, and this, again, if, if I'm not mistaken, this is facing southwest. So as you're saying, uh, Commissioner Gregor, this is kind of hovering above Campus Drive to a degree, but also near to the Energy Education Center. So looking into that northern parking area uh, to the north of the overall new Transportation Education Center. And you can see there to the top left, some of that asphalt area that's currently in place. And you can see that there, uh, just to the left of the uh, kind of pointer of the label, the orange labeling there, thank you. Yeah, so that, that's kind of the area we're looking at from kind of the top right corner looking to the bottom left. So uh, that's a bit of what you're seeing here. Here again, that shows that outline of the, the building with some future expansions. And yes, certainly uh, kind of um, an intricate uh, kind of interior, internal road network that would uh, be disrupting a bit of that connection to campus road currently. Oops. So that direct connection just north of the Energy Education Center, I think it would, uh, that would be, I say necessarily eliminated, but it would be you know, reconfigured. But uh, again, hopefully the applicant can respond to some of those questions more specifically. Thank you. All right, so that looks like we don't have any pressing questions from the rest of the commission at this point. I presume Rod Bagley is the one who is speaking oh, for the, I'm sorry, Fisher. Commissioner sorry. Christofferson. Thank you. Um, I would also pose this question to the um, project owners, but um, students aren't like to have convenient parking. And uh, I would like to hear some of the other ways that they had, a, had looked at uh, configuring the parking so that it's closer to the, the building that the students are entering. Um, I just, I, I would like to hear um, how they landed on this particular solution. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm sorry for that. Uh, any other questions from commissioners? But I think we are ready to hear from the uh, applicant. I believe Rod Bagley must be the one because he's got his hand raised. Is that correct, Rod? Yep. Hello, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great, great. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, taking us up tonight. I realize that uh, this was just one part of a bigger project, but it, it was important that we thought that we should kind of get moving with uh, this particular phase for the reasons you already identified in terms of, you know, we really need a pay place for, uh, you know, construction phasing, uh, contractor parking. We have a number of uh, uh, semi-truck tractor trailers that are going to get displaced by the construction, and we need to be able to stage some of them close to their training site as well. So those are some of the reasons kind of driving us toward uh, this building this section today. Uh, I can certainly speak to counts in a minute, but I'd like to kind of run through some of the other issues, and I'm not going to remember all of them, so please prompt me with uh, other questions that you may have. Um, Jeremy, Campus Road to the, to the north and the east is certainly a city road today, and I believe that is already signed as no parking along there, at least on one side, uh, so we would certainly discourage any parking in that area. Uh, the road will continue between the energy center and the transportation center as, you know, use for, uh, for CBTC traffic in and out of the campus. So that would uh, remain uh, one of our one of our thinking points in terms of location for the parking lot is the fact that we have uh, Excel Energy has a transmission line that runs right through the center of our campus. And it's quite a large easement on either side of that that creates an area where we can't construct anything above ground. But they will allow us to build things like parking 
lots and stormwater treatment areas and you know things that stay flat so part of our effort was to really try to utilize the land that we have on the campus the best that we can um, in terms of distance from the building this lot first of all this lot is, is uh, an extension of the rest of the parking for energy and transportation so it's not it's not this lot just specifically for transportation to be pretty much a first come first serve in terms of parking so it will be closer parking than this for transportation depending on the time of the day and what else might be going on in the building um, in addition there is parking to the north of the building that would uh, i think about 100 and some stalls there that we would plan and we would use that for for visitor handicap visitor parking handicap parking uh, you know again student to staff can also park in that lot as well as far as being closer uh, I would point out that not ideal, but the distance from this parking lot to the front door of transportation isn't any farther than what students currently walk from the Claremont campus parking lot to the Business Education Center. And just as another reference point, it's also about the same as walking from the, the downtown parking structure over to Pablo in terms of kind of a, it's about a two or three minute walk. And, you know, ideally people like to park, park closer. Uh, we do have some designated stalls in the energy center parking lots today for you know fuel efficient vehicles that are reserved for you know anybody who drives a vehicle that fits that category. So there are some closer spots that way. Um, bike racks will be available. Those kinds of things. Uh, let me think here before I jump into the counts. The uh, as far as the counts are concerned, you know, I guess I'd first like to comment that if you look at the parking lots today, obviously they're very vacant because of our COVID protocols. We're, uh, we've kind of moved a lot of our programming is being done online today. At the Energy Center, students are coming on campus. We've limited the number of people that can actually be on site at one time just to keep groups small. But if you go back to, uh, like in the fall, is typically our busiest time, and you'll find that that parking area for uh, energy is probably 75 to 80 percent full with students and that doesn't uh, our counts that we've generated doesn't account for additional programming and training we do a lot of business and industry training so uh, all the electric cooperatives from the north and the western part of the state will come in for for training and on those kinds of days it's, you'll be hard pressed to find a parking spot in that lot uh, in addition we do high school academies high school tours community events from electrical vehicles to garden clubs and other things, uh, program advisory meetings, there's a lot of other activities besides students that they're gonna they utilize parking out there. Uh, if we look at what we've projected for parking counts in FY22 when the transportation center is up and functioning, and, and the plan is for fall of 22 for that building to be on online and, um, and offering programming. So between energy center and transportation, we're projecting 526 parking spots needed. And that's based on, you know, the number of students we would anticipate actually being on campus, you know, during different parts of the day, not necessarily every student that's registered for a class, because we know that they're not all gonna show up at the same time. But we feel 526 between the energy center and transportation center is a reasonable number to expect in the fall of 2022. If you look at what we've what we currently have today and what we proposed to build for the transportation center, we're suggesting 596 parking spots. So that's what, 70 more than what uh, we have students for, but then you need to remember uh, business and industry training and other events that get hosted on the site. So we feel that, it, we feel that that's a reasonable number for what, uh, what we're building there. Uh, I'm gonna stop there for a minute. Uh, and ask that you uh, any other questions that I haven't addressed. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Claremont parking lot after we're done, but I want to make sure we talk about about this uh, this site first. All right, thank you, uh, and I, we'll watch for uh, questions from the commission here in the room. Questions from our commission members online. I see Jeremy. Uh, Commissioner Gregor, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Bagley. Thank, thank you. Um, I guess I was wondering about what CVTC does right now to to encourage you know different forms of transportation so that 
maybe the campus and campuses are not as dependent on the automobile and you know it seems like the assumption is is that each student will not only drive but they'll drive alone and then they'll even have access to an automobile in the first place and you know we look at the difference between higher education institutions across the country and we see some with very little parking and even in this community we see UW Eau Claire that you know has to take transportation very seriously about how to get people there on buses or biking and things like that. Um, obviously this location has many challenges to those um, those ideas but um, you know if we want to move the needle on you know how people think about transportation and obviously a transportation education center and an energy education center right next to each other I would hope would would marry you know some sustainable practices for um, students and and model them for students um, you know some people may not think that public transit and riding a bicycle is exactly innovation in transportation but but they are the most sustainable forms of transportation and I appreciate the electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle emphasis with this project but I'm just trying to figure out you know where some of the other you know quality of life and sustainable education comes along with this in in the form of actual you know design and implementation of a facility um, so I just I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on that and how you know this parking lot you know fits in with a broader mission for the institution Sure. And I would say, I'll, ask, I'll, I'll, I'll respond, but I'd also ask it to either Adam, if you have any additional thoughts, please raise your hand and weigh in here. Um, you know, part of our challenge is kind of the physical waste location of the site. I mean, there isn't, there isn't a bus stop that, that stops, you know, right out in front at this point. Uh, if you think about walkability, you know, I know that there are some, uh, you know, housing that's starting to get built closer to where we are today, but it's still not... Uh, a good way to, uh, to, to to you know to walk to the site. Uh, you know, bike trails have getting gotten better. You know, we'd certainly be interested in any way to make a connection to our campus with bike trails. You know, we'd be happy to uh, work with work with you on, on creating something like that. Um, I, I know that our student life, our student uh, yeah student government uh, does promote you know buses and bus passes and those kinds of things, but we still need to get them you know onto the site. Um, you know, part of our challenge, you know, part of our mission is, you know, working on more efficient vehicles, which you know, would include electric and, and other modes of transportation. Um, but I don't quite. Uh, I'm struggling to, to give you a good answer, Jeremy, on you know other alternatives that would offer different ways for the student to get to the campus. You know, aside from the things that I've just mentioned. Thank you, and if I may have a, a follow-up to that. If you have a quick question, go ahead, Jeremy. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I just, you know, I see one of the opportunities given this, you know, is a, a year or two out for the, for this building to be completed is to, you know, we do, we are in the middle of our, our transit development planning process for the city of Eau Claire, for Eau Claire Transit, and um, I think there's some opportunities to, to expand transit to this area and you know one of the things that I'm not sure you know I, I guess I'm not sure exactly what the result of the some of the changes have been but I, I guess my question was back in 2016 you know CVTC um, charged students for a parking pass if they if they so chose to drive and they um, and, and in 2016, the, there was a change made where, where all students, you know, have it as part of their fee that they automatically receive a parking pass. So essentially, if a student was not a driver, they were um, still paying for, for parking. Um, and yet, for someone who 
who needs transit, they have to pay a fee to be able to get a, a subsidized transit pass through student government. Um, I guess I'm just kind of wondering, you know, if you see any changes to, to that model and, and what you've seen um, in terms of student, you know, transportation behavior since 2016 when that change was made. Not sure if you have any information about that. I, I, I do not have any specific counts that say that it's gone up or down or stayed about the same. You know, part of that, part of that fee, and I don't want to kind of get the sidetrack too much, but part of that parking fee was really a public safety fee. It wasn't just a specifically for parking. It was really about, you know, safety for all of our students on campus. And, and in the past, parking fees have paid a lot of, of what covers our, our current uh, public safety department and officers. So, yes, part of it was parking, but it was, it was more than that. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That appears to be it for questions from the commission. Um, I believe Mr. Whaling was for a while expecting to speak. Um, his hand was up, his hand is up again. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Bagley, I will mute your button and uh, activate uh, Mr. Bagley, or Whaling. Okay. Sorry. Did it let me do it? seems to think I need to unmute there all righty there we go now you're live uh, Jeremy uh, okay Jeremy just a couple of follow-up items that uh, from what Rob was telling you uh, we are definitely a commuter college and we did a study and we kind of looked at the driving habits of our students and we really found that a lot of students are driving in um, up to an hour, hour and a half into our campus every day from, uh, from the communities all across our 11 county district. So we did find that there's not a lot of carpooling going on just because of the nature of where the students come from and they all convene on CVTC. Uh, and then from CVTC, a lot of the students then uh, go directly either to a lab, um, you know, like our animal science program or uh, agronomy students, they're traveling all over the district to labs. Um, and then the, uh, they also then go to work. So. We feel that these numbers are pretty realistic and we put a lot of time into actual realistic numbers just to make sure that we're not getting additional parking spots out there. We have had in so for the past that have used um, public transportation and they do have to walk from the, the culvers on the south side of um, Menards all the way up there and usually about during the middle of the winter time they decide that enough is enough and, and they just quit coming to camp. So it is a, it is a challenge for us to, to do that. So those are kind of sort of kind of about that, and then we also had affordable apartments nearby is another challenge. Um, you know, apartments in general, are clear, are kind of a challenge, and our students uh, typically their budgets are a little lighter. Than maybe perhaps some of the university students. Um, so that, that's where again, where a lot of students will stay in the communities that they grew up in, and then they do commute to college. So that's kind of the the follow-up questions I have. Thank you, Mr. Welling. Are there further questions for you from any of the commission members? I don't see any. There's a hand raised, uh, Commissioner Gregert. Thank you. Uh, I guess my, my question would be about the current asphalt lot um, just to the west of the Energy Education Center. It sounds like that is primarily for like the existing transportation staging area essentially for the for the large uh, trucks and trailers um, so would that essentially just stay there as as is um, and and be more associated with uh, the new building to the north it's uh, essentially on this map it's, it's just labeled as asphalt but yeah, I guess I was just wondering more information about the future of that and, and what exactly that's used for currently. Sure. Uh, so our training program, they use that uh, piece of asphalt and that'll stay in that existing place. We don't want to move that because it's a very good condition piece of asphalt. Uh, and it's very durable and it's a thick asphalt too for the semi-trucks that do all their maneuvers there. So part of the truck driver training 
uh, has specific DOT regulations that we need to, uh, and maneuvers that we have to train students on. And that right there is a chunk of, um, that we have a couple of different uh, backing exercises that are part of the DOT testing that needs to happen, and we're a third-party tester. So we've got cones and lanes and all sorts of other uh, lines that are drawn out there for the students. Um, and that gets used uh, six days a week, so Monday through Saturday. You'll stu find students out there 7 a.m. to almost 10 p.m. most nights. Um, so again, that's going to stay there. It's going to be heavily used in the transportation center, uh, again, north of that plot of land. Thank you. I right, see that you. we have hands raised both by Mr. Bagley and uh, Mr. Lambert at this point as well. Do they both wish to speak to this item? Uh, I believe, Mr. Whaling, I will be muting your mic and activating one of theirs. Are you ready? Uh, Mr. Bagley first. Just a second while it allows the thing to process here. Amazing how long it takes. All right, Mr. Bagley. Okay. I think I'm back. Uh, just a couple additional comments I wanted to make that I didn't mention before. Uh, this additional parking lot that we're proposing uh, in, in, the, in our, in our longer-term facility plan, we're also intending to move our residential construction program out to the West Campus, and our current plan would be to locate that facility just south of this proposed parking lot. So if there was room available in any of these parking spaces at that point, we would intend to utilize that same parking lot to support the new residential construction facility. And that's probably 25 students and a couple of staff members. So just something else to think about in terms of how we would utilize that space. And then the other comment I just wanted to make, I know, I know there's a lot of concern over the, uh, the large student parking lot on Claremont Avenue across from the Business Education Center. And, and you're absolutely right that it, it's not utilized the way it should be. Uh, I wasn't here when they built it, so I don't really know kind of how it got to be that size if it was utilized at one point and it's just kind of dwindled or whatever it might be. I'm not sure I can't speak to that. But I do know that that lot is in rough condition and it's on our target to reconstruct that parking lot in the next few years. And uh, my commitment would be is to right size that spot based on uh, you know, more accurate parking counts for the Claremont campus. So, uh, you know, that certainly could create some additional green space on, on that side of town along Claremont. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? I see none. I'm going to move along. Uh, I said Mr. Lambert online also has a hand up, so I'm going to move to him. And in a second, it'll allow me to. There we go. Mr. Lambert. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Commissioner. I think I'm online. Yes. Um, to, to tie into what Rod had mentioned about the Claremont campus, um, I believe Ayers did a little work on the entry and exit points at campus. And back, it, back when we did it, which I believe was 2012, there was enough traffic exiting in that parking lot that we added that second exit, the right turn only on Claremont. So I think back at the time that, that parking lot probably wasn't uh, as empty as it is now. Um, another point, um, Adam and Rod hit all of them from my notes, but if you look at this West Campus as a whole, this parking lot is central to the Transportation Education Center the Energy Education Center, and then their Emergency Services Education Center, along with the future residential construction program building that Adam had mentioned. Yeah, I think that's quite yeah. clear when we see the well, overall plan. Yes. Any questions from the commission at this point? Thank you, Mr. Lambert. I'm going to put you back on mute. Oh, uh, Mr. Gregert, Commissioner Gregert. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lambert and maybe other uh, folks uh, with us, I, I guess I was kind of fleshing out that, interested in fleshing out that point about its centrality, I guess, which I think is a really good point. I guess I'm just trying to figure out some of the particulars of the design where there's really, it appears that it's really only possible to get to the lot from north. And for a pedestrian to to get anywhere, this really just adds a, appears to add a sidewalk going to the west and, and north toward the transportation center, but not necessarily directly toward the energy education center as directly as it perhaps could. That it also doesn't have any like connections to the any of the buildings to the south. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out, you know, if it is going to be a very central lot, there would obviously have to, have to be work to, you know, cr create connections to it. But um, I guess I'm wondering what your thoughts are about, you know, having other entrances to this lot or additional pedestrian connections, particularly to the Energy Education Center. Um, Mr. Lambert, you're live. Um, I know the we have one connection currently to the Energy Education Center from this lot. Um, that is a, a sidewalk. The other connections would just be uh, through through traffic aisles onto the existing sidewalk on the south side of the Energy Education um, patio area. I would let Rod or Adam speak to the potential for more of a connective network of um, pedestrian walks on campus. It looks like Rod would like to speak, so I'll transfer that over to, to Rod's microphone. Mr. Bagley, you're back on. Thank you. Um, certainly, the, you know, so, so to, to Brian's point, there, there is a sidewalk that, that rings kind of the, if you look at the, there's like a, like a green space or patio area, you see a couple of circles with some hash marks in it there. There's a sidewalk that rings that area today, so we, we could look into trying to create another connection from the parking area over to that sidewalk. Obviously, it's going to have to cross traffic somehow, but it could certainly be marked in such a way to indicate it as a crossing. Uh, as far as going south, you know, we haven't really developed or defined anything there yet, although we believe that there's some opportunity. Uh, it, it's still kind of a long hike over to the emergency services building, but uh, as we do certain events, you know, this could certainly serve as an overflow parking area. And uh, as far as entering into this parking space, yes, today we just show entries from the northeast and northwest corners. But we also are looking at reworking the campus roads through the through the campus is in, is in, isn't in the best of shape to the south of that parking lot, and so we would certainly have the opportunity to make a connection going to the south uh, when we do rework uh, campus road, and uh, and we're thinking about doing that in conjunction with uh, you know, another referendum project we have is the emergency services building, and as an expansion there, they will expand uh, an apparatus bay and a, uh, a firing range to the, to the north towards Campus Road. And that will also create another connector into Campus Road, you know, within the, within the campus, not uh, not on the city uh, portion of the road. So, you know, there's certainly some opportunity to look at ways to uh, try to create some connections there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there further questions from the commission? Uh, Mr. Lambert, do you wish to speak again or just have your hand remaining up? I guess I'll just uh, exchange here again. Oh, uh, hand is now down. Uh, so at this point, any discussion from the commission? Do we be looking for a motion? Mr. Vice Chair, it is a public hearing, so I don't know if there are any others online. Who would like to speak for this? Or I've been this? watching for hands raised, and there are no anonymous okay. speakers. And so everyone 
is listed with a name and has the ability to raise okay. a hand. Very good. Thank you. So with that, yes, Mr. Seymour. Thank you. <clears throat> I move approval. Do I have a second? Commissioner Christofferson. I'll second. Thank you. All right. With that, we will take the roll, and I will begin with discussion. discussion. I'm sorry. Do we have discussion, having made a motion and seconded? Commissioner Gregert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is maybe a, a question for s staff here, just following up, going to page three of our of our packet is the um, the letter um, to the applicant, and, and number two on the list of conditions is provide a pedestrian connection from the parking lot to the proposed transportation education center and the existing energy education center. I guess from a staff perspective, is there is the connection that is being proposed considered fulfilling that condition or it sounds like it's implying that there should be um, more of a pedestrian connection all right I guess I'm just trying to figure out like what that the wording they mean in the uh, because I guess in my mind I you, you know additional connection to the energy education, the north, but just wanted to see if I could sure. get some on that at number two. Sure, and again, uh, no, thank you, Commissioner sure. Gregert. Um, uh, didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> these items here, I would say, are a little bit more um, basic in terms of our general recommendations moving forward to the next phase of a site plan, but that's a, a bit of the intent here. As you see here, there is that uh, proposed connection along the southwest, then to you know, along the west to the north. Uh, simply again acknowledging that that is there and proposed, but not necessarily complete in this drawing. That as the transportation education center building and surrounding area comes in with uh, that site plan approval that the two here are indeed connected. So just uh, trying to maintain some continuity uh, between this approval and that one in particular with regard to that type of connection. Uh, so that's, it is shown here, but does again, as you see, just stops because it's, this is really, it stops at the end of this phase line. So that's the, Part of the rationale for that, I hope I didn't over explain it. And then as you noted too, with the existing edgy energy education center, uh, certainly could be some additional opportunities for connection there, uh, especially um, again, perhaps to the, the east, there are no pedestrian connections proposed along the east portion of the parking lot, uh, nor are there any uh, obviously identified here connecting to the existing building itself there there certainly could be some opportunities to the to the west and north of the proposal here so uh yeah those are certainly uh, valid uh options for conditions tonight but um again did want to mention that the connection to that next phase is really the intention of uh recommendation number two is that sufficient as explanation Sure, yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Is there uh, Commissioner Christofferson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, a, a comment uh, along with that this, uh, with any approval from this evening, this would go in front of City Council that is really very energy conscious and sustainability conscious. And I, I just see that, that starting this development from the parking lot expansion uh, gives us an opportunity to engage students on wondering, um, I heard as far as the parking, first this is a, an outreach campus, there are a lot of students that are driving to this area in order to um, access this education. There are people that have uh, jobs off campus so that they'll be leaving in order to get to work, et cetera, et cetera. But it would be interesting to have um, this energy center and transportation center continuously looking at 
their own usage and how they can join the city in the sustainability efforts that we have. How instead of increasing parking, can we look at ways in which we can make the car less essential? So I, I don't see, I, I'm hearing that this parking lot is, is key to the construction, it's central to other expansions, but I, I would really like to see the conversation between the campus and the city's sustainability goals continue to be open. Thank you. Are there further comments and discussion among the commission? It appears there are no, uh, yes, Commissioner Gregert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I'd like to make a motion to amend the staff letter to include a condition for the parking lot that would uh, require a pedestrian uh, connection, I guess two different pedestrian connections to the Energy Education Center from the new lot. Um, one of them would be, um, I guess it's somewhat hard to describe, <laughs> there's a, um, the biofilter area that is between the new lot and the old lot, it would essentially, it would envision a a sidewalk connection on the west and east end of that over to the the green space uh, to the south of the Energy Education Center because as it was said earlier, there's a sidewalk around that. So essentially connecting um, both ends of the lot to that central space. That would be my motion. Is there a second for that motion? Anyone from the commission wish to second that specific alteration to the pedestrian path? I'm afraid I don't see any second for that, Jeremy. So that returns us just to the motion at hand. Is there further discussion? With that, then I will start the start the roll call for voting with uh, Commissioner Krosnick. Commissioner Krosnick. I'm sorry, I think I accidentally hit the button. Oh, I, yes, uh, are you voting aye or no? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Seymour. Aye. Commissioner Christofferson. Aye. Commissioner Gregert. No. Commissioner Brenholt. Aye. Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. And I as a sitting chair will also vote aye and the motion passes. Um, next item is number six, a public discussion for approval by a plan commission regarding a site plan for Cherry Tree Dental. The request is to approve the plan. Applicant is Advanced Engineering Concepts and the location is 3203 Stein Boulevard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with two minutes before kickoff, I will make this short and brief. My understanding there's a football game right now that Mr. Allen's interested in at six to three, so he's not missing much. Number six on the map is south of uh, CVTC's parking lot, uh, south of, on Stein Boulevard, uh, south of Claremont, um, shown on the map. Uh, some members may remember the redevelopment of the property to the east for the medical office. Now they're redeveloping the uh, parcel as shown. Um, they're gonna remove the existing building and some of the parking and then add in Cherry Tree Dental as shown on the screen here. Uh, 
like the chairperson said, the applicant is uh, advanced engineering concepts. The parcel is approximately 0.57 acres. It's currently zoned C1A as an Apple medical office facility. Um, the address is 3203 Stein Boulevard. Um, in your packet is the narrative provided by the applicant along with the site plan, floor plans, and elevations. This proposal is a footprint uh, dental office at approximately 6,824 square feet. Uh, in your packet is noted the elevations, which we'll get to in shortly. Uh, the, the new dentist office here would remove the, remove the existing building and then build this, and then they're gonna add a, um, a parking lot connection uh, on the east side of the parking lot, uh, so customers and staff can access all around the building. Um, the narrative does explain uh, the existing parking situation and also they're basing it on employees needs and customer needs during peak, which was 30. The applicant is proposing 38 stalls. Uh, this would be accessed through uh, the existing area. I can get to, oh, here's the floor plan showing the new dentist office. It is a lower level uh, storage area and conference room and then the main level uh, for the dentist office. And then the flow, uh, elevations provided by the applicant. Um, another elevation shown by the proposal. I don't know, the clicker is not really working here. Um, we do also wanna mention as staff, uh, that they are proposing a bicycle parking um, near the entrance. This sign is proposed uh, in the previous application. Um, this commission approved a new multi-tenant sign on Hamilton Avenue for the entire neighborhood. Uh, these two tenants would be shared with this tenant and then to the tenant to the west. Uh, I also included the existing sign as shown on the screen. This is from Google Street View. It is just a single tenant uh, monument sign currently they would be removing that sign and then adding uh, this two tenant building sign, which is part of the approval this evening. The property owner is my understanding both owns both properties. Uh, typically we just ask for a sign easement, meaning long-term if one of the properties does sell, they still have the rights to that monument sign. Uh, the other option the applicant did have was to add a standalone tenant sign uh, for Cherry Tree Dental, but in this situation, we're actually not doing that. We're just gonna have one sign replacing the existing sign. In the packet is the grading and drainage, uh, public utilities and tra traffic and transit report. Uh, there is a few conditions that need to be met prior to uh, final approval. And with that, I'd be standing for any questions this evening. All right, are there questions from the commission for staff? in the room, it looks like uh, Commissioner Gregert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so my understanding is that there, um, that there is a, a side, that the, the, there is a sidewalk gap essentially between um, the property to the west of this proposed building and the and the public sidewalk at Stein Boulevard. And I guess I'm wondering if there's a way to, is, it, is that property owner to the west like the same property owner or is it just the one to the east? I guess I'm just trying to figure out how we can create a pedestrian connection to a public sidewalk from this building so it's kind of in the middle of a bunch of other properties. Yeah, excellent question, uh, Commissioner Gregert. My understanding is yes, it's the same property owner. Uh, it would be up to the commission and the applicant is on the line. Uh, there is a sidewalk connection north of the building that leads to the sidewalk to the west, um, but there is a gap, about a 10 foot gap of sidewalk that needs to be extended from the north sidewalk to Stein Boulevard. Um, you can ask the applicant that question as well. Um, Mr. Allen and myself did review that uh, granted, it is a different parcel, same ownership, um, but in the end, um, I think staff agreed that if uh, the applicant is willing, 
Uh, it could be an added condition. All right, are there additional questions for staff from the commission? Does not appear to have any further questions for staff. Thank you. And that would be the expectation then to talk to Trent Schmidt. I will unmute. Mr. Schmidt, you're on the line. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I kind of missed one of those last questions there, but yeah, I can certainly uh, speak to any um, site-related questions um, that uh, staff might have for me. Um, one thing I guess I uh, will add that in uh, some of the site information that we were gathering regarding to the utilities. Um, I think in the narrative we wrote that we were still looking for um, the water utility, um, what the existing water utility location was, and we were able to work with the city um, utility department to narrow that down. Um, and it's basically coming in at the same location as the sanitary service, however, that water service and the service to the building to the west, which is under the same ownership, is uh, on the same water line. So I guess a part of this, we're also gonna, part of this development, we're gonna correct that so each building has its own um, water service. Um, other than that, any other site questions, um, please let me know. I believe the question at hand was whether or not uh, some connections can be made of sidewalks either crossing the, addition, the other site or combining with the other site to make sure that all of the office parcels have a direct connection to an adjacent roadway by sidewalk? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, that's something we can definitely uh, discuss with the owner since they do own that um, that parcel. And I guess like I mentioned too, we will be doing that additional work for that water service on the separate parcel. So um, I will definitely bring that to their attention um, to include that as well. All right, thank you. Are there other questions for the owner's representative? see any uh, hands going up from our commission members so thank you mr. Schmidt for your time I'm gonna mute you again and at this point I believe we would be looking for a motion from the Commission mr. Seymour thank you I uh, would make a motion for approval thank you do you wish to include the sidewalk question in that motion? Um, it sounded like that was going to be something they were going to discuss. Um, I don't know if at this point it's possible to, that would be an amendment, wouldn't it? That can be included as part of the, the motion, yes, or as a separate motion or not included at all. Since but you're originating, you can add that to the first motion. Okay, I would add that uh, that detail to the motion. Do we have a second? Looks like uh, Commissioner Gregor beat you. Yeah, I'll second. Thank you. So is there discussion from the commission? I don't see any hands raised in the room, and it doesn't look like any hands are raised for the online portion. So I think we are ready to take a vote. So I'll begin again with Commissioner Prosnick. Aye. Thank you. And go to Commissioner Christofferson. Aye. Commissioner Seymour. Aye. Commissioner Brenholt. Aye. Commissioner Gregert. Aye. Commissioner Wolfgram. Aye. Commissioner Obeyed. And I, as the temporary chair, will also vote aye, and the motion passes. Thank you. That brings us to discussion item number seven, which is the landmark designation concerning Phoenix Park Bridge. 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. Um, I'll try to be brief here. Uh, there's certainly a lot that we could discuss about the uh, Phoenix Park Bridge, uh, more specifically and technically known as the Chicago-Milwaukee-St. Paul Railroad Bridge. Uh, as you saw with uh, the Wells Fargo building, as it's known, on Grand Avenue uh, a couple months ago, this is the next uh, item that's being considered by the Landmarks Commission for local designation. So with that, uh, the uh, Landmarks Ordinance, which is Chapter 2.65 of the General Code of Ordinances, uh, requires that Landmarks Commission must notify you of the pending designation. And uh, this essentially starts the uh, public uh, review process, 30-day review process. And any comments concerning the proposed designation should be forwarded to uh, me at the uh, Community Development Department by November 6th, uh, prior to consideration of a anticipated uh, public hearing at the Landmarks Commission on Monday, November 9th. So with that, uh, just making that acknowledgement uh, is a quick uh, history, uh, very quick. Uh, the original uh, structure was built in 1882 by what was then known as the Chippewa Falls and Superior Railway. And in 1903, the, bid, the bridge was replaced with what you see there currently. So uh, part of the uniqueness of the bridge uh, is that it's a rare example of what is known as, um, say it after me, Whipple through truss. So it's Whipple through truss construction, which uh, prior to this, I was not aware was an actual thing. So uh, that being the case, it is uh, certainly very uh, rare. There are only uh, two other such bridges that remain in Western Wisconsin. So it is a unique uh, construction type and certainly a unique history behind the bridge as a whole for Eau Claire as well. So certainly uh, viable uh, for local landmark designation. And as you know, it's been uh, in place as a pedestrian only bridge uh, for 30 years already, since 1990. So uh, that happened fast. <laughs> and here we are. So with that, again, um, as you know, currently there are uh, you know, programmed lighting, LED lighting system on the bridge that was installed in 2017. So it is certainly an iconic central uh, figure to uh, not only downtown Eau Claire, but Eau Claire as a whole. So. With that, again, this is uh, simply the uh, advising the plan commission, which along with other uh, departments and regulatory authorities that uh, the Landmarks Commission is considering the local landmark designation for the Phoenix Park Bridge. And you have until November 6th to provide me with any of your comments, concerns, questions. I can then forward to the Landmarks Commission at their public hearing Monday, November 9th. I believe it's our responsibility to indicate whether we understand there to be any impediment to that designation sure. based on the various expertise we bring to the Planning Commission. If there is anything you're aware of that would interfere with that uh, landmarks designation being placed on that structure. Uh, if there's those of you with uh, uh, elected positions, if you have a constituency that's against it, that would be a uh, an issue perhaps otherwise uh, from an architectural standpoint it's mostly structural I leave that to the engineers <laughs> anyone uh, looks like Jeremy would like to speak on this as well mr. Uh, Commissioner Gregert thank you mr. chair uh, the yes you know there's obviously been some changes to the to the structure um, yeah, very recently, like the the lighting, and also I just I noticed that there are warning signs on either end of the bridge as well as other bridges about warning people not to jump off of it. <laughs> um, I guess I'm just wondering how those types of additions impact eligibility or you know long-term historical you know um, authenticity. I guess you could say. Sure, uh, very good question. Thank you, Commissioner Gregert. Um, in this case, uh, there are, 
there are several different, uh, I guess, kind of condition analyses that are done. Uh, they're kind of self-performed for the local designation. In this case, uh, the staff has submitted um, application to state that the condition would is considered good, so not excellent, but not fair or deteriorated. Uh, it, it has been identified as altered, certainly, again, simply the fact that it's a pedestrian bridge, no longer a railroad bridge, could qualify it as altered. And as you noted as well, that uh, there are certainly some other uh, modifications that have been made, um, I, th I think primarily to, to safety uh, in that regard, which is why a majority of the uh, kind of physical appearance, historical information associated with the structure that has been identified really references that trust system, the construction, the construction and engineering of the, build, of the bridge itself. So that's uh, the kind of main focus or intent of the uh, local designation is the fact that it is a unique um, trust construction system and certainly it has uh, withstood its, um, the, you know, the, the, the tests of time as it were since uh, 1903. So yes, although it is altered and has noted as such, uh, it is in good condition and uh, again, focused on the engineering construction style uh, versus anything else. Thank you. Commissioner Christopherson. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Allen, I wonder for the public if you would just remind us that local, at the local level when it's recognized, what are, what are the um, protections and limitations of that uh, recognition? Sure. Um, as, as a in a, in a broader picture, a uh, local designation is, is more um, honorary than anything. Um, it is, is certainly an acknowledgement by the, the community that uh, there is a, a structure of noteworthy historical significance, again, to the community. And for various reasons, in this case, again, it's for that engineering design. Um, and again, in terms of kind of restrictions and and such because it is publicly owned, uh, that fact makes it more um, uh, protected and restricted more so than perhaps the local landmark designation, uh, more so than uh, certainly the private building that was you know uh, referenced earlier with the Wells Fargo building. Uh, in that case, the, there's an opportunity for access to historical tax credits, uh, other, other type of funding sources because of that designation uh, that's countered by uh, requirements to you know, maintain and limit modifications, kind of maintain its current character and limit modifications uh, to the structure. So there's kind of a give and take with that. That's essentially the same in this case, but as a bridge, um, as Commissioner Gregor mentioned as well, you know, signage, um, you know, the, the the uh, walking surface, things like that are really the, probably the main things that could be modified and altered uh, and that really impact the overall character in, of the structure. So again, acknowledging that you know, there's lighting system that changed some of the um, outward appearance in, to some degree, uh, but uh, again, the focus here is because of the significance of his engineering design. I happen to have had contact with the, the group that installed the lighting system on the bridge and there were specific requirements re about the attachment method sure. was not allowed to interfere with the structure of the bridge itself so all of the attachment points for the, the lighting fixtures are a clamping type arrangement and there was no drilling sawing cutting of the structural elements that was allowed whatsoever so it was all a, all a very careful surface application of the lighting method for that that system so that was mm -hmm. also done uh, in the way that best preserved the structure while uh, providing a decorative lighting very good yeah thank you i don't believe i see any further questions so i believe okay. that the commission has no objections to this moving forward excellent as a landmark thank you so much and again if there's anything else uh that you or, or other um, you know, constituents uh, within the community, I would like to present certainly before November 6th would be preferred to provide any specific comment. Otherwise, again, public hearing uh, on Monday, November 9th. Thank you. 
And that brings us to item number eight, which would be future agenda items and other announcements that are necessary at this point. Are there additional scores to uh, review from various games? Uh, let's see here. Seven zero. All right. Thank Seven you very zero. much. Oh, okay. Uh, Thirteen ten, Kansas City over there of England. So far. But uh, yeah, it, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, the next meeting is uh, currently scheduled for the 19th, October 19th, uh, two weeks from now. And we do anticipate having uh, approximately a one hour uh, comprehensive plan work session uh, prior to that. So, I mean, prior to the seven o'clock start time. All right, thank you very much. There are no further items, then I am ready to adjourn this meeting. I see no one with any further raised hands online, so we are adjourning. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.